Well, welcome everybody. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Terrence Lachran. I'm the Director of Partnerships and Programming for the Vision Council and Vision Expo shows. On behalf of uh, Vision Expo, as well as uh, the NOA, the National Optometric Association, we'd like to welcome you to a very special eye to eye today. Uh, it's special because usually we're here with amazing panelists, as we always are. Uh, but this eye to eye is in collaboration with the National Optometric Association in honor of Black History Month. Now, before uh, we go into uh, uh, with our, uh, our collaboration and our co-host, I'd like to first go through just a few housekeeping rules. Uh, number one, as you can see, um, we use Zoom as a platform. Uh, the reason why we use Zoom is because what you see right here, kind of the Hollywood squares. We can all see each other. We can all talk and chat with one another. A lot of us have not seen each other in a year and a half now or more. So this allows us to have a sense of community when it comes to our industry. But in order for this to work properly, we ask that you please stay on mute unless you're one of the panelists. If you're not one of the panelists, we ask you please to stay on mute and all our panelists know to mute themselves when they're not speaking as well. Um, now, just in case we cut off for any reason at all, we just ask you to just give it five minutes, try logging back on, if after five minutes, we're still not up and running, uh, we'll send you an email as to another time that we'll host this session. Uh, now we love questions. Some of you did an excellent job of sending questions ahead of time, but please, um, you, there's a few ways you can uh, participate as the, in the Q&A. Number one, the chat box. Go ahead and type your question into the chat box and we'll try to get it answered. Or when it's time for Q&A, uh, you can just raise your hand, use the little raise your hand button. Uh, then your hand will pop up. We can unmute you. You can come on camera and ask your question on camera. So uh, without further ado, now the housekeeping is out of the way. As I said, we are really excited for this I.I. It is a happy hour again. So hopefully you brought your beverage of choice in there for happy hour. I know our panelists did. Dave, that's not considered a beverage, Dave Friesfeld. <laughs> um, but it's very special because, uh, you know, we've had a, a very long standing relationship with the NOA. Um, and uh, the president, Dr. Cheryl Reynolds, she is uh, not only a colleague, but a really good friend of the show and a personal friend of mine. So I know she wanted to say a few words on behalf of the NOA. Dr. Reynolds, uh, it's great to have you with us. Please take it away. Thank you so much, Terrence. And I want to thank the Vision Expo uh, committee, employees, staff. I really want to thank Terrence Lacrin for partnering with the NOA. As you know, our organization has been here for over 50 years advancing the visual health of minority population. And what we've learned from last year and we're continually learning is that we have a long way to go. And that one of the things that the National Optometric Association can do better is to partner with industry to really get uh, the information out there about uh, minority eyewear uh, companies. And so when Terrence and I talked about this, I thought it was a great idea. We, the NOA is here to promote minority eye health issues, but not just minority eye health issues. We're here to give a platform for our doctors, our students to be part of the profession. We want to have a seat at the table. And for 50 years, we've been pushing this and we know this fight continues. So I'm really proud of tonight and I'm proud of our partnership. And again, I wanna thank Terrence and the entire team at Vision Council and Vision Expo for partnering with us. Hopefully this is not the last, the first or the last, this is more to come. We want to continue to do this, promote uh, minority the eyewear businesses in our site line, on our Facebook, to have that partnership so we can build the industry together. So thank you all for being here. And thank you again, Terrence, for having me. Dr. Reynolds, it's an honor. We really appreciate the NOA. What, 52, 53 years? Yeah, you know, we've existing. actually been here 50 something years, even though we say wow. over 50 years, it's been like 52 years that uh, the NOA has been fighting the good fight of moving the mission of uh, minority eye health, black eye health uh, uh, forward. So we're proud. Definitely, we're proud to be part of this. So thank you for including us in this. Uh, and we know we have a few more sessions as well, Dr. Reynolds this month mm -hmm. that the NOA will be holding and maybe we can um, get that information for the end. Of the, uh, of, the, of the session as well. Uh, so again, everyone, uh, we talked about DE&I. DE&I is, is a really great word that we're tossing around right now. When we've covered on eye to eye, DE&I, looking at um, you know, black professionals within our industry, part two dealt with allies of black professionals within our industry to push forth a more equitable agenda. Uh, we then came another one, we looked at black women in the industry from all different aspects. 
Uh, but we look here today, we're talking about black eyewear entrepreneurs. There's no way that we really can say that we're pushing for a more equitable agenda if we're not pushing and supporting black eyewear vendors. Uh, we think about just the makeup of the eyewear space right now. I remember going to my first Vision Expo in 2015, and I was excited, especially the black community, as much as they support and consumers of eyewear and trendsetters. I was very surprised to see uh, not one vendor on the show floor was owned uh, by a black entrepreneur. Uh, then we went on and as I developed in the industry, I was able to meet quite a few. Now today we have a panel of some amazing creatives, uh, some amazing professionals uh, and really some visionaries. And this is just a sample. There's many more that represent black eyewear in, in this space, but we thought that this uh, panel right here will give us a great overview. We're gonna talk about their journey their independent story, and how we as an industry can support them, as well as how they are supporting the industry as well. Uh, so one by one, we're going to go. I'm going to ask the panelists um, all to just introduce themselves, talk a little bit about their business. Uh, panelists, if you could do one thing also. After you introduce yourself, just use the chat box to uh, type in your social media handle so that those in the audience, they want to go to your social media page, they can take a look, you know. Uh, let's start in, a, in the A, since she was so vocal and so proud of where she's from. Uh, this is uh, someone who I've admired from afar, admired up close, and I just love their journey as a couple, as well as her as a Black woman in the industry and an eyewear entrepreneur. Uh, no other than my sister here, Tiffany McIntosh. Tiffany, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Terrence. Um, thank you, Dr. Reynolds, the NOA, Vision Council, Vision Expo, everything that you guys have been doing. Um, and, and, and continue to do and have done. Um, just grateful to be, you know, on this panel with you guys and to be, and to, to participate in this. Um, yes, in the A. <laughs> so a little bit about myself. Um, me and my husband, Warren McIntosh, I uh, mean, you know, we own Eye Candy Creations. I have personally worked in the optical industry for 20 plus years, um, pretty much working in every facet of the industry from the retail side to the wholesale side and then on to designing and distributing collections for, um, started out with quite a few celebrities, many of them who you might be familiar with, like such as Cynthia Bailey and Eva Marcel and Tasha Cobbs. But we currently own the license to FUBU in the eyewear category. So we recently launched FUBU Frames. <laughs> and we also distribute um, another brand for Art Safe, which is an affordable luxury collection out of London. Um, they've been around since 2016. So our brands have been worn by Many celebrities such as Beyonce and J Lo and Ti, Chris Brown, and and so many more. Um, we've also had a licensing deal with Steve Madden, and a lot of our brands are have been and are currently being sold in a lot of major uh, retailers and department stores. Um, the current collection that we just launched, the Fubu collection, has about 40 styles, opticals, and suns, and the For Art's Sake has about 100 styles, opticals, and suns as well as well as eyewear chains. You know, so. Our portfolio brands is all about affordable luxury. So in a snapshot, that's eye candy creations. Amazing. Uh, one thing, one, one of Tiffany's best qualities really is her modesty, her humility. Uh, what Tiffany did not tell you is that eye candy creations and FUBU frames were featured on the cover of this month's Envision magazine. So congratulations. Thank you. Know, you. That's a step forward for not just you, but it, the entire black eyewear community. So we thank you so much thank for what you, you and your you husband so Warren are doing. Thank you. Thank you so Excellent. much. Excellent. You know, let's just keep it in the A. We might as well. <laughs> uh, let's turn it over to Dr. Amaka Ngadi. Dr. Amaka, how are you? Hi, Terrence. Hello, everyone. I'm doing well this evening. Um, Dr. Reynolds, uh, hello. How are you? Um, thanks to the NOA for co-hosting this with the Vision Council. I'm super excited to be here, of course. Um, <laughs> Terrence, I just love Terrence. Terrence always um, includes and thinks about me, so I appreciate him so much. Um, my name is Dr. Well. Gotti. Thank you. <laughs> and I am a, an optometrist. I practice in Atlanta. Um, and uh, way before I ever thought about being an optometrist, I have been an eyewear, you know, an eyeglass wearer and contact lens wearer. And I just refused to be in glasses for so many years because um, 
I could never find any that fit me. As soon as I smiled, my glasses would pop all the way up to the sky. My West African cheekbones just would not allow me to be great in glasses. And so I was um, looking for something, you know, a solution to that issue. And I noticed that a lot of the patients in my demographic had similar issues, finding frames that really fit well. And so I just talked with a lot of different opticians to figure out ways that we might be able to fix frames or design frames that would actually fit African and black features a lot better. And I discovered that they there were uh, three different areas that they noticed. And of course, black and African features are very different. We're not monolithic, but there were def definitely a few things that we identified that we thought could help that solution. And so I created this frame line, Anwali Eyewear, um, that is designed to basically fit optim um, black and African features more optimally. And so, I'm really excited about it. It's new. I am currently in pre-order phase um, and I'm looking to uh, eventually move into a wholesale phase and I'll definitely drop my social media information so that anyone who wants to be in contact can definitely contact me um, that way. So as the brand and the company grows, I can include um, everyone in this journey. I'm really excited. I'm excited about what we're manufacturing. I'm excited about the designs. Um, I want people to have eyewear that makes a statement without speaking. And I am just really excited. So thanks for having me. We are really excited for you. We appreciate you being on this journey. We appreciate being part of your journey. Uh, and we can't wait to see uh, your eyewear collection sell out by this time next year. So speak it to Terrence, existence, right? Speak, speak it to right? existence. <laughs> remember where we were last time this year? Do you remember those conversations? So a lot can change in a year. And I'm definitely Indeed. proud to be here and excited about where we are right now. So thank you. Excellent. If anyone can do it, I know it's you. So uh, let's head to DC. Let's head to DC. You know, I met this, uh, this young brother uh, through social media, actually, I think through LinkedIn, which I usually don't. Uh, yeah, Jamal, tell us a little bit about who you are and a little bit about your, uh, your brand and your company. I, I appreciate that. And it was through LinkedIn, uh, power of social media. Uh, Great evening, everybody. I appreciate the opportunity to, to share this space. Terrence, I appreciate you in inviting me um, and my business. And, um, you know, CEV Collection, which stands for Clear Eye View, was started by myself and business partner Jalen Smith. Uh, we both grew up in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Jalen now lives in Dallas, plays for the Dallas Cowboys. And prior to CEV, I had started and built a, a previous eyewear brand. So Clear Eye View was Jalen's mantra. And as he, he's a very entrepreneurial guy, as in myself, and he and his team were thinking of what could we do to, um, you know, build a brand or potentially establish a business off of this. And so they, they thought, let's call Jamal. And that's what we decided to do. We said, okay, let's, let's put our minds together and the whole premise of CEV Collection is we truly believe if you have a focused vision, you can accomplish anything. And our product is a physical manifestation of that. Um, so simply put, we create elevated eyewear for, for every occasion. Uh, we started out online and then we started doing capsule collections. One of the first capsule collection we did in store and retail was with the Cowboys. That did very well. And uh, we started at the end of 2019 or 2018, 2019, and then the pandemic hit. Uh, so now uh, we've continued to do well online, uh, primarily selling Sun and about 20 or 30% of our customers uh, switch over their frame, their Sun lenses for uh, prescription. Um, and we are looking for opportunities to partner with, do more capsule collections and get into uh, the brick and mortar optical space. So appreciate the opportunity to be here and, and look forward to a, a great conversation. Good to have you in. Um, for all my Vision Council members out there, Jamal is actually one of our newest members of the Vision Council. So it's really nice to see him get involved in the industry association as well as being able to support the industry. So I just admire that about you, Jamal, uh, from day one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, you know, the, the thing about the, the Black eyewear community, because it's so small, uh, you would get referrals. Hey, you know, T, did you hear about this brand? Do you, do you know this person? You ought to connect. Uh, and good friends of mine, you know, friends of the room, uh, Coco and Breezy Dotson hit me up one day and said, hey, listen, you're in New York. You've got to meet this guy. You know, you got, he has, he has a brand out. It is, it, is, it is dope. It is doing some really amazing things. We co-sign on it. And him and I met and uh, a lot has happened in a short period of time. 
Jarrett, you there with us? Hey, good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing? Thank you for having me, Terrence and Dr. Reynolds. It's a pleasure to be here and be in this space. So the company is called Embernice Eyewear. We are um, fairly new. We launched in 2017. Uh, it began because I was selling glasses at my HBCU, Morgan State University. I was paying tuition and rent doing that. It became a thing that just was synonymous with me. Like everyone knew me for selling glasses. So like I decided to take it to the next level. I, um, my father did security. I took a, a shot in the dark. I met a guy with my father. He said, take, take, take a trip to China, you know, see who you can meet out there. I hopped in the one plane, met a manufacturer. And from there, it's been a journey. Um, we connected with people from Japan, Paris, and we're our new brand. We have no brick and mortar. So we've been doing this all through social media and the internet. It's been a pleasure to meet people like Terrence and other people like Coco and Breezy because they kind of helped us and got us to where we need to be. And just spaces like this, you know, with everyone in this industry, because I did go to a Vision Expo. I did take trips to China. I went to Paris and it wasn't a lot of people in the room that I, I could um, you see myself, you know, in the room, basically. So this is a wonderful thing. And I'm happy to talk and meet and, you know, get to build on these relationships with everyone in the room. Most definitely. Cool. Good to have you. And Jamal and Jared, remember to type your social media oh, yes, yes. Info in the chat box, please. Um, I decided to leave the farthest away and the place will probably be most jealous about uh, not being for last. Um, Alicia Hartman, um, honestly, uh, I met Alicia, when was it, 2018, Alicia submitted to the Optimum Retail Award. If you don't know what that is, that's an award Vision Expo gives for some of the top independent retailers in the world. Uh, we had uh, submissions come in from Europe and all across the US and Canada. And all of a sudden we got this one submission from Barbados. But like, well, what is going on in Barbados? The judges met and they selected Alicia as a finalist. And then she talked a little bit more about her eyewear journey. So Alicia, introduce who you are and um, why don't we talk a little bit about your brand? Hello everybody, I'm Alicia Hartman from Barbados, optometrist. Um, I have been in the eyewear industry from since I was a little girl. Um, my family has a business in optics for over 50 years um, here in Barbados. And um, so optometry is in my blood. Um, then I opened my own store in a luxury um, center in Barbados called Lime Grove um, with my own optical boutique um, called IQ Stylist Opticians with the vision really to always bring eye care with a stylistic approach. So, you know, the shop as much as it um, promotes eye care, we do it in a very stylistic way, introducing, you know, unique niche brands from all over the world, always believing in, in independent eyewear. So um, to be honest with you, you know, we're talking about diversity tonight and, um, there is no other place than that's diverse or multicultural than Barbados. So for me, um, this brand, Peoples from Barbados, um, that I created was actually a tribute to the Peoples from Barbados um, when we started. And it was just meant to be a simple tribute, a capsule, you know, representing the people here and their lifestyle and the culture. And now I'm proud to have this brand to represent an entire country and showcase how multicultural we really are and the diversity as well. So that you will see running through the entire collection in the campaigns we create. Um, so it's really, really exciting. And this particular topic about diversity for me is going to be very interesting to discuss because that's what this brand was created to do, to basically showcase that no matter the color of your skin, um, you know, where you're from, everybody deserves great eyewear. And that's what we're here to do, to make great eyewear in Barbados for a wide um, demographic of people, whether you are a fisherman, uh, a jet ski operator, the prime minister of Barbados, um, and uh, whatever face shape you have, this collection will be able to fit most people, the comfort of the collection. We have um, nine styles in four colors. 
which are beautifully made by Japanese artisans. So we wanted to also keep the concept of my store that I have with niche high-end luxury brands throughout my collection. So it's going to be very exciting for me to discuss all of this with you. Now listen, we are really lucky to have you in this industry. So thank you for being so present. If you are not following Alicia on Instagram, please do. I tell you, um, her social media will make you very happy. Uh, and I mean that. You will find a lot of joy following Alicia. So please, Alicia, type in your social media handle so I can follow you. We'll get to the questions here. Uh, I thought we could start the first question with just a, a relating a brief uh, stat from a recent survey. As many of you know, the Vision Council, we recently launched an industry diversity, equity, and inclusion survey. And one of the questions were, we asked our participants, do you feel and see yourself represented in the marketing when it comes down to uh, industry, whether it be POP or just industry in general? And out of the respondents, only 60% felt that they felt that they were represented in the industry's marketing. Just to let you know, anything below 70% is considered an area that is definitely needs to be worked on. We were at 60%, right? So I'd like to ask our panelists, I'll start with you, Jamal. Um, CEV Eyewear, what are you doing in your marketing to represent a more diverse and inclusive population that our industry services and serves? First, we, uh, we put ourselves in, in the marketing. Um, and, you know, that, that's, that's a sad stat, you know, point blank. Um, and then second is, you know, we, cre we create a brand and we want to create a brand that anyone that sees the design of our product that feels they, they resonate with our product can, can wear our product. But at the same time, we also know we have an opportunity, especially coming through what we've come through um, in, in 2020. So we're very intentional that one, we, we recognize that and we want to lean into that. And so we do focus on having a diverse model group, but then two, we put ourselves out there. Myself, Jalen and Charles, we're a small team. We're all black, young black men, right? So we're very intentional in, in sharing our story that, hey, this is who we are. And hopefully it doesn't only rep, uh, resonate from a brand perspective and it's good for quote unquote marketing, but it's also uh, a, an empowering story. So young, other young black men or other young men in, in general can see, uh, can see the path that, that we're, uh, we're creating. So that's, that's our focus. That's how we do it. Uh -huh. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. Tiffany, how are you guys at Eye Candy Creations? How are you doing the thing? I mean, inclusive marketing for sure is like a no brainer because it reflects the actual world that we wanna live in rather than like a fictional place filled with unrealistic perfect models. You know, for consumers, just like what Jamal was saying, they want to see someone that looks like themselves in, in advertising because they're more, more likely to buy that product uh, since they can envision themselves wearing it. Um, I not only believe that brands should want to appeal to these larger audiences, but they should want to embrace the diversity and the equ uh, equality and represent, you know, the, those that have been previously underrepresented. And for us, for instance, in our initial campaign for FUBU with the campaign images, you'll see a young African-American um, woman, you know, um, that looks a lot like me. And <laughs> like you said earlier, that might be because she's my daughter. Um, but I mean, but that's exactly what I mean. We definitely um, wanted to capture that in our upcoming photo shoots. You're definitely going to see a lot of people from all different walks of life um, and nationalities as we really want to for people to understand that for us by us is for all of us. Amazing. And if you want to see Tiffany's twin daughter, she's right behind her in that photo uh, on the wall. Uh, so no, very well said. Very well said. Sir, what is Ember Niche uh, doing? What are you guys doing there at Ember, Ember Niche? Uh, it's for representation of uh, different uh, diverse population, but also the New York vibe. Yes. Yeah, so um, being in New York, you know, it's, more, it's like a melting pot. You have people from all different parts of the diaspora that came together. So you have different subcultures. So we, um, you know, if you're from the West Indies or you're from Africa, it's different things. At Ember Nice, we want to build a community. So that's our main thing, community. You know, like the essence of just New York, a community-based eyewear company. So we do include 
everyone that we came up with or we know or we might like yesterday was um Trinidad you had the carnival we had like a carnival frame we threw in our story that we drew up and created because you know it's the community we want everybody to be involved so that's one thing we definitely do and even down to our frames we name them after all of our friends so every frame we have on our page is named after a friend we grew up with I um, mean my business partner we're both from New York so it, we made it a community-based project so people can see themselves and say oh that's for us you know that's dope like our tip was route tip was taken like it's for us you know and that basically was something we really wanted to focus on and let our customer know, like, this is a community, not just buying glasses, you're entering a community and an atmosphere, you know? So that was one thing we do in Embernese, or a few things Embernese were doing. Definitely. You know, I don't see a frame named after me yet, though, Jared. I mean, it's coming to us. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming, man. So, there you go. I'm going to get back to something you and Tiffany said for us. We'll get back to that in a few minutes. I want to talk to our two optometrists. I know the NOA is here with a heavy uh, um, representation from optometrists. Um, so Amaka, Alicia, both of you are optometrists first, and you decided to now go into the space of frame design and manufacturing. Tell us a little bit about that journey. How did that occur for you, or where did that come from? Uh, uh, Amaka, want to go first? Sure, um, definitely, not a problem. Um, so as I mentioned before, um, I am an optometrist, but optometry was my plan B. And that's a different story for a different day. But um, I've been wearing glasses or contacts since I was eight years old and I never found glasses that fit me well. So about 14, I told my mom I had to get out of the, um, get out of the glasses and get into some contacts. I couldn't, I mean, every pair of glasses that I wore just was a disaster. Um, so um, I knew that it was something that I wanted to address at some point, and I did uh, like even a business plan in optometry school that discussed this frame line I was going to have, but actually crossing that bridge and making it into a reality of like creating a frame line um, that kind of came over the past few years as I just was like, I got to do something else. I have this whole creative side that I don't do anything with and I need to be passionate. I want to be passionate about something. I love fashion. I love making a statement when I come into the room without without opening my mouth. I, lo I love what you can do when you're well dressed or when you have on a statement piece that people can automatically just, you know, it's a conversation starter. It's a confidence booster. So um, it wasn't a huge stress for me to get into the fashion aspect of um, eye health and eye care, um, and but it was a process, and I need I needed to ask a lot of questions that I didn't have any answers to. There was you know I didn't have any exposure to this field, and so that's why I started coming to the Vision Expo, we, which you know how exactly how I met you, and um, just asking questions and actually saying out loud the things that. I wanted to say like, you know, why aren't there glasses? Like, why is every single pair of glasses I put hit my cheeks? You know, I don't understand. So asking those questions and just kind of stepping out and just being courageous to say, hey, this is what I want to make. And I don't want anything you already made. I need you to redesign it. We're going to do different numbers. We're going to have a different tilt. We're going to have everything different. And so that was just, you know, I, I guess how I kind of made that conversion. It's been a process, but um as I got my prototypes and I started seeing the different things that the manufacturers could do with me if I was insistent and, you know, consistent with following up and just being a little bit more specific, I started to figure out the better questions to ask because I didn't know, you know, I, I'm new to this whole thing. So I started figuring out and with my practice, I actually lease, so I don't sell glasses. So that wasn't even a huge part of my process. Like patients will ask me, but my biggest thing was, at, in my practice, I was able to focus primarily on eye care, not the not the frame part. But the frame part is the you know that's the that's the shebang. That's the what's behind the curtain. That's what people want. And so it's been a lot of learning over the past few years and trying to figure out um, different aspects. But just very exciting. I love it. I love it, Alicia. How's your journey been uh, going? Incorporating fashion, uh, frame designing, as well as your clinic. Uh, I think you're on mute, my dear. Oh, let's try it. I'll try Okay. There you go. Um, exciting. <laughs> you know, as you you know, my the, the name of my store is IQ Stylist Opticians. So of course, I care for me as the optometrist has always been the main focus. Um, but I really wanted to change people's views, particularly in Barbados, as it relates to eye care. Um, I wanted to bring some of my personality 
um, to what I do because I felt, you know, that would be really ju doing you justice. Um, and so when I created the store with a stylistic approach, um, you know, there's always a vibe there, you know, our customers come there for not just glasses, but just for conversation and just interaction. And this is why I'm a huge fan of brick and mortar and it's not going anywhere, by the way. And um, so, you know, always been passionate about styling everything that we do is stylish um, here at iq in barbados so when the opportunity came for me we were celebrating our fifth anniversary at lime grove which is a luxury lifestyle center here in barbados um, you know i thought to myself why not create just a capsule you know a brand was not in vision at the time it was a capsule really just basically to celebrate the people that live here through eyewear because you know i'm so used to bringing beautiful brands niche brands to barbados you know from all around the world um not necessarily that they fit it perfectly so for me it was always a very big task because my demographic is so diverse as i mentioned before you know um as to the faces that are here caribbean people in general are very very mixed you know with arawaks and caribs and and Afro and Chinese. So our faces are really, really unique as well. In addition to that, you know, this is a, it's an island, it's tourism. So we will have European people from the US and Canada and the UK being our biggest market. So for me, it was always a very personalized approach anyway to selection of glasses for my store. Um, so when this opportunity arose, we were celebrating the 50th anniversary of Barbados. The collection was created, Peoples from Barbados, as a tribute. And it was beautiful because it not just represented um, eyewear, because what we were able to do is really incorporate the culture, the lifestyle, um, and everything about Barbados in the eyewear. So not in only the design being technologically advanced, because obviously as an optometrist, I'm doing with a lot of high-end brands, you know, I know all about fitting and what I needed to do in terms of, you know, having certain frames specifically for a more black face versus more of a European face and so on. Um, not just from that, but for me, what the exciting part was, was to really help to showcase our culture through eyewear. I, I thought like I have a mission, a purpose. And I think for, with any brand, when you have a really great purpose, it's really exciting when things are not going well. Like now, mm -hmm. for example, really, really important to have that. So it's really exciting for me to do that. Uh, we use all our, in our campaigns, all local photographers. We use not just models, but anybody from the street. You know, our, for example, our campaign um, was featured on the cover of 2020 magazine in 2019, which was like so amazing, not just for me, but for Barbadian people to see themselves you know, represented so well. And I actually have, um, of course, you know, Terrence, I'll do this. Um, of course. <laughs> yes, yeah, we can clap for that. The fisherman here with our model. I mean, you know, he was ecstatic to be a part of this campaign. Um, so we have so much work to do. Um, yes, to fit every beautiful face, whether it's Afro-Caribbean, Chinese, because Barbados is very diverse. Though to say we're 80% Black, um, of course, we, my particular mar um, market is the demographic, you know, it could be anybody. Um, not, and even from a class point of view, it's just anybody who deserves and feels like looking beautiful. That's what we're here to do. That's my, um, and to make sure the frames are comfortable, unique, exciting, colorful. Um, so it's, it's so exciting. Every single pair you put it on, you feel like you're in Barbados, I swear. So we bring I, this I, 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 I can attest to that. I have two pairs and Whatever, whatever the cold weather comes in, I put my PFBs on. So uh, we have a really great question from the audience. It's about mentorship. Um, now, uh, Jared, you've been able to have some mentorship within the industry. So the question is, how does someone reach out for mentorship in the industry? So the way I would answer that is by putting yourself out there. You know, sometimes it's just good to ask and see what can happen by going to these events like this and others where you can network get to meet other people in the room, step outside of your comfort zone and really put yourself out there. That's the best way I can, I personally came across meeting people like, um, and just, you know, taking advantage of the opportunity. So even like, you might be a little nervous, you might be scared, like, oh, so I just walk up to them, but just do it, you know, just 
put your prize aside to just, you know, just, just make it happen because you never know what could happen that small second or minute. And that's how I got to be blessed with meeting like people, Coco and Breezy and um, t- me and Terrence have been talking with other brands as well. So it's, it's something you should definitely, you know, just say, why not? Why not me? You know? Interesting story. Jared actually approached me at Vision Expo 2019. Yeah. And I took his card and meant to call him and uh, he put me again a year later. So sometimes it takes the persistence, doesn't it? I- I actually met Tiffany there too. I don't know if she remembers. Yeah. I said, yeah, I walked up to her booth. She had a big booth in the back, in the, in the Vision Expo. I just walked up to her. She probably didn't remember because we were just starting off, so. I do remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so proud of you. Thank yeah. you, Bruce. I, just also, I want to plug Jamal. I um Somebody told, it wasn't Terrence. I asked Terrence if he could help me with mentorship and Terrence directed me to somebody who directed me to Jamal. And Jamal was super helpful. So shout out to Jamal and just being open. Um, but what Jared said is really true. It's when you have to ask people for help, you kind of feel, you know, you, it's very intimidating to ask someone like, hey, you know, I really kind of want to do what you're doing um, and how do I do it? Um, but a lot of people are more helpful than you would imagine. And so just having that courage to just take the first step and reach out to people respectfully, obviously, but um, people people do um, want to help. And Terrence is doing a great thing in, in so many spaces um, to, to try to increase that that um aspect of this industry because there are a lot of things that are very secret and you know you can't google how to get things manufactured that's not on google i tried it's you ain't gonna find it um so it, it just it was very difficult when i first started because i'm like how to make glasses how to get glasses made how do you make glasses how if you want to make glasses and you want to make I, I searched every possible topic and then i had to humble myself um okay. so <laughs> That's funny. And all those links brought you to Alibaba, I'm sure. Uh. Well, not even, funny enough, it really, and then when you get to Alibaba, you see about a hundred different options. You're like, okay. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, and Corey, I, I will I, tell you, I'll stay on top you Jamal. Maka, uh, appreciate you. But um, the, the industry, so I don't have, I don't come from the industry historically. Um, the first brand I started, I started on my parents' kitchen table, bedazzling glasses. So I don't have a, a, a educational design experience as well. But with the optical industry, from my experience, it is a family. So, and what I mean by that is not only a family business, uh, you know, our family businesses throughout our industry, but that's how people look at each other. And so, like Jared was saying, you know, nine out of 10 times, yes, you know, it it may be, you know, a little nervous going up to somebody, but with the energy and the space that we're in, a lot of people are approachable. And they'll, if, if if maybe they'll give you, you know, one conversation, or maybe you'll, you'll start a, a lifelong friendship, which I have in mentorship with, you know, others in this industry. So I would definitely say, put yourself out there, but it, I would also emphasize this is a family oriented industry from my experience. And uh, it's only been benefi- it's only been beneficial when you do step out and say, hey, you know, can I get some help or can I get some advice? Um, and, it, and it goes full circle. Well said. Uh, Corey, I'm gonna just basically talk about two people on here. Uh, I know they won't mind me saying this, but we have uh, uh, my good friend Nico Resselier from uh, Europa on the line, you can wave. And David Friedfeld, uh, two people in the industry, uh, he's covering his eyes now, uh, that I know will be more than happy to uh, answer any questions or uh, be willing to uh, give you any guidance they can. So please feel free to look it up on the chat, DM them, exchange uh, contact information. Um, I'm sure that's one way to show up to events like this. And uh, that's one way just DMing people here that you know have a history. So. All right, so Jamal, let me have you on. I'm going to talk a little bit about something very important, right? Um, we think about the fashion industry, you know. Um, you know, uh, Kirby Jean Raymond from Paramount, pair of director at Reebok, he's been very vocal about not putting Black designers in a box. Now, what do we mean by that? Sometimes in fashion, we see a Black designer and we say, okay, well, they are a streetwear designer. Um, or they, de- they design for the streets, right? What do you say to people who look at black eyewear designers and manufacturers and say that they are designing only 
for black consumers or only for black retailers? I think it's spaces like this that, that some, some uh, uh, retail buyers or decision makers just have to be educated. They're, they're coming from a perspective uh, of just not knowing the purpose of how, you know, I'm a designer, right? I'm a business person and I happen to be black. I'm very proud about that, very intentional about that. So I think it's spaces like this, spaces like uh, Vision Council is taking to open up the doors, which is very important to hear, you know, a perspective that they may not hear, right? So that they may only be getting perspective from media or, you know, they may not even have that many uh, black colleagues in the business. So I think that's, that's the first part. And then in these spaces, uh, understanding and hearing like, no, we're not just, I'm not, and I'm, my colleagues on here are not just for black people. We design frames, you know what I'm saying? There's multiple frame shapes as we, face shapes as we all know. And yes, you know, there are certain features that are more for African-Americans, but who's to say a, a, a Anglo or European or white person can't have the same type of features. Right, so I think the, the education piece is the first part, opening that door and then understanding, I think, it, and then it goes to the brand. If my whole thing is if there's alignment with the brand and there's alignment with product, um, you know, just give, a, give us a shot, give me a shot. I'll, I'll ask for it, give me a shot. And, and, you know, more times than not, I'm confident that, that we can perform. You know, as far as my brand, I'm sure these other brands on the call as well. So I think that opening the door, the education piece, and then when you, when, you know, the designer entrepreneurs in the room, um, all we need is the opportunity. And then from there, it's, it's table stakes. It's just like any other brand. Well said. Tiffany, Fubu, for us, by us. So I, I'm a white optical retailer. I see at Vision Expo. I say, oh, FUBU, Forest Bias, Black Eyewear Company. I'm going to go ahead to the next booth. What, what, what do you say there? Not, not at all. Not at all. I mean, I totally agree with Jamal. I hate being placed in the Black designer category. Like he said, I mean, he literally, I was like, get out of my head over here, Jamal. I was like, I'm a designer. I just happen to be Black. I mean, he hit that, I mean, directly on the head. Um, I hope that we can one day get to a place to just say designer without the colorism pretext in front. Um, you know, we recently actually had an experience with one of our new accounts that bought the FUBU collection in, and they have been surprised day after day after day that so far, all of the frames have actually sold to people that were not of color. <laughs> you know, and they've been really surprised and people have been posting and tagging and so forth. And I was, and I'm like, yes, because it really should, should, should come down to, you know, the quality and the design. And if it makes the person feel good and look good. And I mean, and that's it, you know, you were talking about Kirby and he recently did a, a interview where he talked about how it's really rare for designers who identify as black to insert you know, their identity and politics into their brand because they're afraid of being pigeonholed into like this singular narrative of blackness, you know, because they're feeling that it could become unattractive to customers or investors in the media. And, and we just really have to get away from that. We have to get away from the um, and be able to overcome like the misconception that just because the designer is a person of color, it doesn't mean that the brand is only for persons of color. <laughs> I like that. Well said. Well said, everyone. I don't know uh, if we're going on, but I wanted to say. Um, yeah, please. I'm like a, yeah, this. please do. Um, I think my background is just um, I'm a Nigerian American. I was born and raised though in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and then I went to a private school. My mother insisted that we all go to private school. So um, <laughs> I went to a private Catholic school. And that school, the first school was made up of uh, Asians, Indians, Koreans. Um, all kinds of different types of people. And then I went to an all white high school and then I went to an HBCU. So I've been a lot of places and I've met a lot of people doing a lot of different things and people are people. Fly recognizes fly in any color. Um, and so I think that that's something that's just universal. Um, but even when I did design the brand, I literally have on my website to optimally fit, you know, African and black faces. And I'm not afraid to be that because, you know, I am a big part of this brand and people know that, hey, 
yeah, this is a black chick. She's Nigerian, but she love, you know, she's a people person and she's a fly chick. So I fit people, you know, white people, Caucasian people in these frames. Um, if you can think of your um, maybe plus size white, um, white client who has round cheeks, these are for her. Hey, honey, come on, you know, so it can be for anybody who who has this face shape and I and I look forward to making different shapes, you know, anybody who's in manufacturing knows the cost and this being something that I'm funding myself. Um, we're going to do what we can, you know, but as we as we grow the brand we're going to have the opportunity to, to give more sizes but again we're not just one thing, but I think that that flyness transcends like all like race and culture. So I, I think that's a big, big part of it. And as people start to identify that, hey, this these are fly, like just like Tiffany said, you know, people love this. They fit well, they're well-made. You know, you're making, you're, you're using top manufacturers, top products. Um, people will recognize that and respect that. So just wanted to add that in. No, that was well, that was well said. You know, I, I, sometimes I get retailers telling me, well, you know, I don't because I don't have a lot of black clientele. Um, well, maybe because you don't have a lot of black eyewear designers. Um, maybe your POPs don't feature black models in them and they're not attracting that clientele. Maybe if you start featuring more black eyewear designers and more black POPs, maybe you'll attract more black clientele to your office. So are you limiting yourself as a retailer to attracting one demographic uh, and going off that? So just something to think about for all of our retailers out there. Uh, now we have a lot of other um, eyewear designers on here, a lot of other black eyewear designers on here. So I'd like to ask, I'll start with you, Alicia. What tools and resources would you recommend to a new up and coming uh, eyewear designer or manufacturer? Oh, you think you're on mute, my dear. Let's try this. There you go. Tell me again, Terrence. I didn't get that one. Uh, what tools and resources would you recommend for, uh, you know, an uh, eyewear designer, eyewear manufacturer that's just starting their business? Um, you mean as in which manufacturers I'd recommend specifically for them? No, what, is, what would you recommend? Need... To, what, to, what tools, what would, what would they need? What advice would you give them? Advice I'd give them? Um, what I'd say, like for me, honestly, because I'm moving from retail into manufacturing, um, I'd say, first of all, it is not very easy to do that. Uh, make sure you have a very big budget behind you. Uh, I wear manufacturing, particularly if you're looking on a luxury level, comes with a big price and investment. Um, so if you're doing this, you're doing it for the long haul. I mean, in my case, I consider myself quite privileged and lucky because at least I have a retail store um, in which I can actually retail my products, um, as you can tell. I mean, to be honest with you, that has been my biggest advantage, obviously, because PFB, my brand, People from Barbados, you know, sells just as good as um, any of the other niche brands that I carry in my store, which whether it be Maikita, Linda Farr, et cetera. So I'd say, to be honest with you, um, it is not as easy as it looks. If you're gonna get into this, you have to know what you're dealing with. Um, for me, I have just been lucky enough to have a retail store to help me along. But it is, I'm gonna tell you, it's very difficult to convince um, others, uh, retailers to buy into your brand. Um, you know, and I, you know what I have to say as well, because I took it for granted the power I have as a retailer um, in that, you know, the way I sell other brands is based on trust that my clients have, have, you know, put in me. The amount of energy I put into selling someone else's brand, you know, I don't know if I get that same love in return right now as a designer and having my own mm -hmm. brand. I'm very honest with you. I do realize my value as an optometrist and as a retailer, um, in selecting the brands I carry in my store, because for me, I think these are all the things you have to consider. Like, what is unique about your brand that you're going to, you know, convince someone to buy into it? You must be thinking of all these things before you make that. I know you love the passion of it all, but it really is not that easy. First of all, it is not that easy to convince people into going into an independent brand anyway. There are thousands of brands there on the market. So you really have got to create something special, something unique 
Um, I think it's really important for you to have a why. Why are you doing this? What is your purpose? For me, what's keeping me going throughout this right now, if I'm honest with you, is not just the passion for what I do, but it's actually having a great why and a purpose because I'm doing all of this to promote something and I'm really passionate about it. So when I run out of money, <laughs> I go, it's okay, Alicia, you can do this. You know, it's, but it's difficult, you know, because you, you're competing with really big brands. Um, you're also competing with a consumer that is not very well informed as it relates to, um, you know, independent brands and what it takes, mm -hmm. you know, and, and for me, that is something that we need to, uh, you need to educate the consumer, your potential retailer. For me, I am very selective with the retailers that I have selected around the world to carry my brand. I do not want to put my brand in a store where it's just going to be on a shelf like every other supermarket shelf. It is important for me to, for you to tell my story properly. Um, so again, start thinking of all these things when you're creating a brand. Who is going to be selling it for you? It's not going to be you. You know, it's great to say you have a brand when you're selling it. But, you know, is it going to be a long term something? Who is selling it for you? Um, I think programs like this is important to put us, um, you know, in the light that we need. Those are my children. I see all these heads, these heads nodding in agreement here. <laughs> why oh. is important excellent it's no, not it. about your resources think about who is going to be selling it for you are they going to sell it as good as you can how are you going to um your services that you're going to provide to upkeep your brand how often are you going to be changing the colors the consumer is incredibly fickle you got to be on it otherwise they'll get bored so you got to think about a lot of things before you jump into this it's not easy Definitely. yeah now, now, Maka, you're new. We started. So you, what resources and tools have you seen or used or you thought might be very helpful to get uh, getting a business started? I was hoping you wouldn't come to me with this question. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, people have been the biggest resource um, in this. One. Because... Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, people have been the biggest resource um, in this. And I've just been... I'm super outgoing. I'm a people person. I love people, but people come to me for stuff. And so I had to turn that around and say, hey, look, let me go to other people with these questions. Um, and, and some people haven't been helpful and a lot of people have been super helpful. Um, so again, people have been the biggest resource in, in this eye industry. What Jamal said about it being a family, it's very close knit. Um, it's very small. People, everybody knows a lot of, you know, they know the manufacturers. They, I know there are a ton of manufacturers, but people know who they are and just asking people, you know, for information and who do they recommend and um, what was their experience and asking. Um, I think I've had the benefit of asking other optometrists what it looks like to be a buyer. And so I've had a lot of, um, of my close friends that have their own private practices what Alicia is saying is very important. Like who is going to sell, who are, you know, who are the people who are, who want to sell the, these products. And so I've been able to take my prototypes to different practices and let those patients try them on. Um, I've done surveys and different practices about the frames to figure out how they fit people, um, what the patient liked, colors, different things like that. I've talked to the optician. So I have, I, people have been the biggest resource for me in this. Um, and I think if you ask me a year from now, I might have more to say about that. But for now, that, that's, my, that's what the answer is. That's huge. That's huge. Uh, and thank you. I saw Jason from VisionWorks. Jason, good to see you. Uh, he said he wants to meet all of you. So his email address is in the chat. Please feel free to take that down. Thanks for joining us today, Jason. Uh, one last question, I'm gonna throw it out there to the group. This session is how to find and partner with black owned eyewear vendors, right? So we found you, you're here, right? How do you plan on being good partners to this industry? How do you plan on supporting this industry, supporting your clients? How would you say that your brand is doing or plans on doing to support this industry and community? Well, um, and it, 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 yep, Jared, please. I'm a big believer in um, lifting as we climb. So, of like course, that. you know, as someone who has received help, I feel like it's only right that I give the help back out to anyone else who wants to become a part of the eyewear um, industry. You know, as far as someone, I can tell someone how to make a business plan, things like that, you know, or outlines for that, or 
grants or programs that they have in place, SBA, where you can, you know, raise money in those in those ways, as far as the community goes. Like Terrence, you had a, um, a charity he's going to do with young students, you know, in New York and other cities. That's something that you can say, you know what, Terrence, there's something going on. I'm going to join in. I'm going to help you as much as I can. Or even looking at who your customer is and seeing what are the major needs that your customers might have and how you can help your customer because it's a community. You're, you're, it's your customer. They're helping you build your brand. So you want to always get back and look at your customer and say, okay, my customer demographic is this. Let me see what are the issues that are going on in this demographic. How can I help? You know, which, which ways I could um, support, donate, and it it can be money. It can be other things. You know, it's not always a money or a dollar thing. It can be other ways you can bring other people and involve other people to help. So those are things I, I feel like is very important. But lifting as we climb is like huge to me, and I think that's something that um, has helped me get to where I'm at now. So it's only right, you know, I give back. I like that, Jared. Very nice. Anybody else want to get a response, Tiffany? Yes, yes. Um, I believe customer service is key for sure, for sure. And I definitely believe in just having a relationship where you can have conversations, honest conversations with your customers about their needs for the business as a whole and the same for, 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 for ours. You know, I found success even from the wholesale side of the business when I was an account executive with the when I was working for other brands um, out in the field I was big on creating these partnerships you know it wasn't just about making the sale today you know it was about making sure the frames on your boards worked for you because if you had product on your boards that wasn't moving it wasn't doing either one of us any good you know let's let's switch those out let's find out what works well in your demographics in your area um what we've personally been doing now with our company for example um and especially due to the pandemic and the current um, effect on all of our businesses. Um, if an account for, for, for instance, needs split billing or, you know, um, terms or even marketing support, we're definitely trying to accommodate them. Um, as far as giving back, we just became an official and preferred vendor with the Black Eye Care Perspective Group. And if you guys are familiar with them, um, shout out to Dr. Ramsey and Dr. Glover um, and, and all of their members, but they have over 200 plus members and we've made a vow to support their members, but to also give back a portion of the proceeds from our sales, which will allow them to activate um, initiatives that they found to focus on creating and improving equity within the health, not only the healthcare industry, but for sure the optical industry as a, as a whole. Um, so those are some of the things that, that we're doing. That's great. So congratulations. That's well said about customer service and congrats on for being a preferred vendor with Black Eye Care Perspective. Thank you. Um, thank you. I was if saying, I can give you, oh, go ahead, Jamal. Yep. Yeah. Do you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Um, I would second what, what Tiffany was saying as far as collaboration. I think that's, that's essential. And it, it ties back into the previous question um, and something I wanted to share with, with anybody that's looking to get into the business, start a business, whatever the case may be, is uh, don't be scared to fail. And I'll say that personally, because when I was a young entrepreneur, that scared me to death. And it still scares me, you know, a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. But it's a good, it's a good, healthy perspective with that. So I would encourage anybody that's looking to try something, build something, whether it be an eyewear or not, embracing the fear of failure. And that's the same attitude and, and approach that I do my best and we do our best to take with our retail partners. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if, if a model's not working or if a frame's not working or maybe the collection's not working, okay, hey, we, we tried it. Let's, what can we do differently? What feedback can we adjust? And it's really that collaborative approach um, that has, has been successful. And again, for us, that comes down to um, capsule collections, right? So really understanding what are the needs of your customers? What are the needs of your customers? And that is it something that we can provide for you? And also, if it's something that CEV collection can't provide for, from you, maybe I can refer somebody else. Maybe I can uh, refer a mock, a Tiffany, et cetera. That, that it may not be in alignment for us, but it may be an opportunity for, for somebody else that I may know. So I think that collaboration piece is really important. And then um, the last thing is, you know, it, it, is, it is an investment on all fronts, financially and time. 
but also there's nothing wrong with starting small, starting where you're at with what you have and, 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 and moving forward, you know, one step at a time. And, and that's the same, that's approach that I try to take uh, with, with our business um, as we continue to evolve, not doing too much, not doing a little, but just wherever we're at, just keep moving forward. So that I would just encourage anybody that is, is exploring starting a brand or getting into business. Um, that's what has helped me. And, and I'd share that with you. Beautiful. That's very wise, Jamal. If I can say one thing, um, a big thing with being partners of the industry is your partnership with association. Um, this, 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 this session is uh, co a collaboration with the Vision Council and the NOA. Uh, uh, the NOA is an amazing industry partner. I'm sure Dr. Reynolds would be uh, ecstatic to talk to all of you on the panel today to find out ways that you can support the NOA. Dr. She unmuted herself. So I'm guessing she's, uh, she has uh, something she wants to share. Oh, no, oh, Terrence, I just wanted to add, we're just so proud of everyone on here today. And we're so proud to be a part of this and to do this with uh, Terrence and, and, and Vision Council. The NOA, like I said, we've been here for 50 years fighting this fight. And we have 800 student members or NOSA students. We have 600 doctors. And so this is the first of many. All right, Terrence, we're going to be partnering right. and doing this and get this right. information out there. We're going to be working closer together to promote uh, this industry and to promote each and every one of you. So we're just so pleased to have this tonight. The NOA is really pleased to partner and get the information out there about the diversity and eye care industry. I mean, I have these awesome frames on. I like awesome frames. I like to see what awesome frames are out there. Everyone just loves me for my frames. So <laughs> um, I can find awesome frames. And let me tell you my, my story as an optometrist. When I went to conventions, there weren't that many vendors that were like you guys on this panel, you know, there weren't any black eye care business out there and I graduated in 1996 and Seco, even Visions, uh, you know, Vision Expo, you could not find one. So we've come a long way, but we have a long way to go. So I want to thank each and every one of you for your vision and for creating such diversity in the eyewear industry because I love it and I know our doctors who have private practice, multi-million dollar practices, would love to have that option. So the NOA is pleased to promote this. So thank you, Terrence. Oh, thank you, Dr. Reynolds. I do, before we leave, I will bring one more um, uh, initiative to, uh, uh, to your attention. Jamal, uh, Jared, you touched on it earlier. Uh, two weeks ago, the Vision Council, we launched the Open Your Eyes Scholarship Fund. You know, something we're very excited about. Uh, what we're basically doing is we are partnering with high schools and marginalized neighborhoods, uh, uh, predominantly students of color, uh, and we are going to provide them a full scholarship, uh, a paid internship, as well as mentorships uh, to Optitionary College while they're in there. Uh, so one thing we decided to do, I said, well, well how can we promote this at the same time? It would dip into my creative side. If anyone knows me on Instagram, the optical poet, I love eyewear. I love eyewear and everything. So uh, I'm very happy to announce that I've come out with a collaboration. It's a collaboration frame chain out of, with a company out of London uh, called Frame Chain, where 100% of the profits from this uh, collaboration will be going to the Open Your Eyes uh, Scholarship. Uh, so I'll give you a little sneak peek of it. We're going to launch it and after this, but uh, you guys will be the first ones to actually see it. Uh, it's, a, it's a black uh, glass beaded chain with a figure out uh, chain underneath, a double chain. Uh, it's black representing the tapestry of my skin uh, as well as what I stand for as a person in the industry as well as what we plan on uh, achieving. The title is called the Time for Change Chain. And again, 100% of the proceeds will go to uh, the Open Your Eyes Scholarship. I will uh, type the link in the chat and it's up for pre-order right now. Feel free to take a look at it. You can order your chain. Um, for anyone who has like a wholesale pricing, feel free to contact me. I'm on Instagram at the optical poet. But again, this is a way also that we're just reinvesting back into the industry, right? We're, we're providing these funds, providing these tools, and giving this exposure, opening the eyes of these children uh, to the industry. So thank you, thank you, everybody. Really appreciate it. So I want to thank all of our panelists. You guys are all amazing. Your your artistry, your your spirit, your 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 business acumen is just so exemplary. Um, it did not for a black designer. It, it, your, your, your artistry, your business acumen is exemplary for our industry. 
in general. So we want to thank you all for your time. Thank you to the NOA. Uh, thank you for holding this event, for collaborating with us on this event, for allowing us to be in your space for the, for the night. Um, go to the NOA's website. I believe, Consuela, we have two other sessions that the NOA will be holding this month. One is going to be at Town Hall, another one on glaucoma. Please support the NOA's virtual sessions. Um, and listen, I will see you all in Orlando at Vision Expo East for the next time. I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, please go ahead and type your comments as well. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we have a, um, a poll that just popped up on your screen. Go ahead and take that. Uh, please, our designers, our panelists, go ahead and type your Instagram and website in the chat box. I also will type in uh, the website again when it comes down to the frame chain to go ahead and order yours for pre-order. Um, and uh, I hope we'll see more presentations and your different opticals over there. So you guys can go ahead and say goodbye to everybody. Yeah, you, you unmute yourself. Thank you, Terrence. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Can't wait to connect in Orlando. <laughs> yes. 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 Yes, definitely, definitely. And we're right next to you, Dr. Reynolds, so there's no reason why you can't come. <laughs> I'm lecturing, uh, you know, hey, so I'm lecturing. Oh, oh I'm, I forgot about that. Doc, Dr. Reynolds is lecturing at Vision Expo for the first time this yes. year. So we have everyone <laughs> register for her class. Uh, support Dr. Reynolds in her session at Vision Expo East this year. Yes, yes. So, thank you, guys. Excellent. Yeah, this was good. You guys did an excellent job. Yes, they did. Oh my God, it was really good. Really good. Thank you guys yep. so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is good. It's really good. Um, yeah, you know, Dr. Reynolds, you said, we said 7 p.m. I was like, that's, that's like an hour close to my bedtime. Um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come out and the support was just amazing. <laughs> well, you know, Terrence, when we chose the time, 7 p.m. works. And our goal is to do this more often. This is the first of many. You know, we partnered with Vision Council before. Uh, we had a great scholarship initiative, and we want to thank Vision Council for that scholarship. We want to thank you for the new scholarship that you've done and created. Yeah. Uh, but we have partnered before. So I think going forward, you know, like I said, many of our members that are on here uh, have great practices. and. They just didn't know where to find some eyewear vendors. You know, if you don't go to Vision uh, Expo um, and you go to Academy or you go to the AOA's meeting or you come to our meeting sometimes, it's just, we didn't have as many represented and, and we need to do a better job. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm hoping going forward, Jamal, you'll be there, Jared, Tiffany, I Candy, everyone that's on here will be here at the NOA to meet our awesome doctors and, and get to know them as well, so. I love it. I love hey, it. question. Is there a, um, like a black business directory? Um, for our membership. So if you would like to know who our doctors are that have private practice, you can always reach out. Our, our Keith Consuel is on here. So reach out to our office and, you know, we have a list of who our doctors are and their practices. Some doctors practice in private practice. Some doctors are in commercial practice setting, unfortunately. Some are like myself. I, I work at a school. I teach students. Uh, but we prepare our students for different modes of practice. You know, one of the things we're preparing our students to uh, segue into is their own private practice, right? So this weekend is all about the students. The students will be having a forum on diversity and eye care, as well as some of the initiatives that they're doing. But you can always contact our office and we can uh, see if we can get you some information about those doctors that are in private practice. That's great. Yeah. Love it so much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Reynolds. All right, thank you guys.